future must lie with nuclear power. And uh, I've often wondered if it wouldn't have been a lot easier if we had discovered this use of nuclear power before we discovered the bomb. Maybe the superstitious fear that so many people have and being exploited wouldn't exist today. But uh, I'm also, in spite of the fact that some critics want to call it pork barreling or anything, I'm determined that we're going to continue the Clinch River reactor, reader reactor, because I think that is the added future uh, of this form of energy. So I'm grateful to all of you. I know the various groups and organizations that you represent. And if we could, if we could have declared China syndrome <laughs> Mr. President, on behalf of the, of the use of nuclear power for peaceful purposes in this country and many, many millions of customers in the majority of our states, we wish to present you our nuclear power agenda, which is a discussion delivered earlier to the White House, which lists some of the items which we think must become involved in a national nuclear policy for the 80s. And we commend it to you. We appreciate this opportunity to deliver it to you as a symbol. Your words uh, initially of your personal support for nuclear power, your personal commitment to the Clinch River Breeder Reactor mean more than anything we can ever do, but we assure you that we're going to redouble our efforts to do our part, to communicate with the public, and to work in partnership with government and labor in the scientific community. So, well, I'm thank you very much. much. And this thank includes you. women for me. Yes, I made the statement on October 8, 1981, about the, about the, the reader reaction. I have to, I, I just can't resist, I have to tell you one little incident. But when I was doing General Electric Theater on television, and visiting all the GE plants, they took me to Hanford, Washington. They were in control of that board. We were thinking we went to one place where they put white gowns on us and felt boots on and so forth. And we went through and then finally came back and took all of those things off and threw them in a designated spot and then stood in what I call a slot machine. <laughs> well, all four dials, but one dial with me continued clicking and was getting up toward where the dial was red, and that was on my left hand. The manager of the plant, looking over my shoulder, said, I said, happens all the time. He said, think nothing of it. It's the radium dial on your wristwatch. <laughs> it was 200 miles away when I discovered I don't have a radium <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd better go over here and, uh, so you can continue the business of the meeting here and uh, do a few pictures. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr.
personal uh, best wishes. The call that I made is these, I was told to truly express them to you from Irving Felt, who was in Vienna, ASLN of Channel 13, helped the rule of law from California, wow. just moving into a new house. And I think of uh, Bernie Myers, the president of Lowe's, Steve Stemmis, uh, the executive vice president in charge of uh, public relations at Exxon. These are the people, in addition to those who are here, who were part of our committee. And uh, Faye Kanan, who was president of the Motion Picture Academy, as you know, has agreed to uh, join our group on August 15th when uh, she completes her uh, tenure of office. All of us, I speak for each and every man here, are very delighted that we're able to serve the government on a voluntary basis. We expect to do a job, and every man knows that uh, much is expected of us, and hope to posture this in such a way that after we step down, or aside, or whatever happens, there'll be a continuing, ongoing relationship and committee that can handle duties and uh, supplement the work the USIA is doing now. I think that's great. I think it's wonderful. And, uh, you know, we tend to forget, and, you know, back in what I call the golden era <laughs> of Hollywood, what an effect uh, our pictures had, an impact on the whole world, just not from the stories and so forth that you know, we talked about, but I remember having people from firms like Sears Roebuck and so forth tell me that after a picture, maybe with a certain garment or sweater or something of that kind would be shown that uh, they would have to order, that they watched American pictures that played in the foreign countries and based their orders on that because they knew there would be a demand for these things. That this influence, I think Hollywood had a, had a great influence on You were part of it long enough, you know. <laughs> and I know that you're older. You mean that possibly bedtime for Bonzo's going to be seen? They're doing some uh, airbrushing on it. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, I know you're, you've got a big schedule, but I thought you ought to know that what they are doing is you recognize you there's a terrible concern in the uh, industry today, motion pictures, tapes, records, of this piracy that's depriving them of billions of dollars. They are entrusting to us with the safeguards that we are prescribing, and until they learn different, they will give us the benefit of the doubt, of uh, contributing to us for uh, utilization of the Iron Curtain on different posts around the world, motion pictures as well as motion picture actors and others. As you know, particularly in third world, or rather right behind the Iron Curtain, this is a way we can meet people that are easy to follow up with. So they're making a very substantial contribution that's worth literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so in the best voluntary spirit of, that you're seeking to promulgate, I think they're coming through in space. Well, I think that's great. That's wonderful. Charlie? Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks for helping him. Yeah, he's doing a job there. Yeah. One more he's thing, this is Al him. Snyder, who is with us. He's, he's a man that uh, satellites your speeches and is working with this group. He's doing the nice job. Thank you. Right. <laughs> he, uh, mm -hmm. I can't, I just have to tell you a little mm -hmm. diplom diplomatic talk here. I just had a conversation with a young congressman, and uh, I think he needs developing, and, and I mean, in the best sense, uh, we should make much of him. He was with the delegation that recently went to the Soviet Union. And with all of the efforts to be diplomatic and everything, he just told them that he thought their policy stunk. <laughs> <laughs> Later, one of them, who could speak some English, said to him, he said, I suppose everything smells sweet in your country. And he said, no, not everything. He said, I represent Kentucky. <laughs> he said, we're famous for horses. And he said, of course, if you have horses, there is another substance you also have. And he said, as a matter of fact, it's very much like what you've been giving to us for. That's great. Terrific. I'm going to nurse him. <laughs> well, thank you Thanks all again. Thank you so much. Thank you. You look as if you're cold. No, I'm glad I'm here. I fall. Sit up there, it might be a little easier to... Well, I don't think it's gone that badly, Mr. President. I think in the debates and the arguments that we've had, I think we've gotten better right now. But my problem is that uh, you can best them in Geneva, but that doesn't mean that that's Moscow. Moscow is the I know. Target. 